Some say the car was the greatest human invention. I say they're wrong. The light bulb was. That's a big bulb. I'm not known for my McConaughey impression. Hey guys, what's up? It's Todd with Shutterstock, and in today's video, I'm gonna be trying some methods for car lighting, specifically a technique called poor man's process. And while I'd prefer to leave, you know, socioeconomic status out of the equation, poor man's process is a term used for faking the look of a process trailer. So a process trailer is how it's usually done, where you put a car on top of a trailer that's being pulled by another car and that way the actors don't have to drive the car while they're acting and you can control really the entire environment which means better sound better quality better lighting all those sorts of different things so in this video we're going to go through three really quick super easy setups and i'll show you how to do it all right look out the window there's a really pretty like bunch of trees look up a little bit like so to start, we did a green screen setup. Now this is one of the more common uses of the poor man's process. It's really easy. You just put a green screen on the outside of the car and light it well. And with one setup, you can get something that looks like this, or this, or this. See that kids? It's the Grand Canyon. You're conceived down there. To achieve this setup, the main light we used was an Aperture 300D. We added the Aperture Light Dome 2 to the front of it, which is really awesome and really easy and fast to set up and take down. I positioned the light right in front of the window at full brightness. And to simulate trees passing by or just subtle variations in light, I had Logan just kind of subtly moving some poster boards in front of the key light source just to add a little bit of subtle shadow here and there and on the green screen side of the car i put another 300d bouncing up into a poster board which created some nice soft light pouring in through the windows on the side of robbie as well as providing a nice even light for the green screen so I decided that Robbie would be driving the car with the window down. So I added a really strong fan, just kind of blasting through the window at Robbie's hair, just to add that extra layer of realism. And I also wanted the car itself to have some movement in it, like it was hitting, you know, some bumps. And to do that, I just rigged up some bricks and a long piece of wood on the side of the car in kind of a lever type setup, and just kind of st stepped on the end of it with my foot while we did the take. And I also used my trusty LED wand kind of stick light and just kind of worked it around the back window just to add a little bit more subtle variation in the back portion of the car. Now one quick word of advice, if I had picked the environment for the car to be driving through ahead of time, which I didn't do, I would have been able to light a little bit more intentionally and probably get a bit more of a realistic result. Next is a classic kind of night driving setup. So I kind of wanted to go for that classic, just, you know, driving through sodium vapor street lights and, you know, storefronts and passing cars, all that sort of stuff. This setup was definitely the most complicated to achieve, but it was by far the most rewarding. Now, the thing about this setup that I was the most excited about was that I finally got to use this. This is just an old, uh, pretty crappy projector that I bought on eBay a long time ago. I think for like a hundred bucks, this thing has been sitting in my attic in a box waiting for a day like this to come and it finally came. So we just set that projector up behind a big giant shower curtain. I expected us to set it up and just be like, oh, well, that it's not bright enough and just take it back down. But it actually really, really brought everything together. And another really cool thing is all the footage that we used on the projector screen or in those green screen shots from before we found on, you guessed it, Shutterstock. Let's see if that's even slightly doing anything good. That surprisingly is. Really? Yeah. 
To achieve this setup, we used a lot of moving lights. The main one was Logan was kind of flying a gelled up orange aperture light storm, nice and high, but also far enough back off the car that it wasn't going to show in a reflection on the windshield. And a little bit further down the car from Logan, I had Robbie reflecting a 300D off of a big 4x4 reflector, just kind of simulating a passing car or perhaps like a storefront with some really bright lights in it. And towards the back of the car, I had a Source 4 Leco just at full brightness with the shutters all the way open, just kind of subtly moving around in a circular pattern, kind of simulating headlights from cars behind. And to key this shot, I used the same Aperture 300D from before with the light dome on it, just dimmed down to somewhere around 20%. And I also rigged an Aperture AL MX inside of the car and bring up the exposure level just a little bit when none of the other lights were pointing at her. And right off the bat, a setup like this is going to take a team effort. To pull this shot off, I needed five people messing with lights and doing various things while the shot was going on. So don't try to do this alone. All right, and everybody do your things. So I really wanted to try something with some weather effects. That's another good thing about doing a car driving shot in a controlled environment. You can kind of add whatever you want to it. So in this case, we added some rain and some lightning effects. And luckily for that, Aperture just sent us one of these, the ALMW. I love this little guy. It's super, super bright. It has a lot of great features and it's waterproof. It has some built-in effects like lightning. This was a perfect light to fake some kind of weather effects. For this setup, I wanted a really dark and kind of moody look, which for me just usually means keeping things as simple as possible. So for this shot, I placed the Aperture ALMW just right outside of frame, right by the window so that the lightning flashes would be nice and bright. And I just had Robbie shooting the front window with a garden hose set to the shower setting. And the trick is to kind of have it shoot upwards and fall down in a natural way that kind of covers both the front windshield and the side window. And for this scene, the only other lighting I used was just my other LED wand light that I use all the time for a lot of different things. And we were just moving it kind of up and down in very subtle ways just outside the windshield. And for this shot, the projector screen definitely did a whole lot of the heavy lifting. So this type of car lighting or poor man's process is a really complex and hard thing to pull off. It's this really fine line between over lighting or not lighting enough and it's just one of those things that kind of takes a lot of practice so if you have a shoot coming up where you're going to need to do it i recommend getting out in your driveway and just giving it a test run so as always i hope you found this video helpful if you'd like to see more kind of cinematography lighting walkthrough type stuff on the channel just let us know in the comments anyways thanks for watching and i'll see all of you next time